Hello beautiful people, I am Raj and welcome back to 100 days to ML where we learn a new machine learning algorithm every day. In today's video, we will see how to apply multi-layer perceptron, the neural network concept for solving a regression problem. So let's go. As we have seen in our previous video, multilayer perceptron is a concept of neural networks and we can use it even for regression. However, while working on regression, you need to understand how exactly the multilayer perceptron works. For this, we need to be sure what parameters we need to use. So let's see different parameters. We have activation functions for the hidden layers. There are basically four types. Identity, logistic, hyperbolic tangent and real rectified linear unit function. Logistic is the logistic sigmoid function where f of x is given by 1 by 1 plus exponential of minus x. Hyperbolic tangent is given as tan hyperbolic tangent of x identity is simply the same thing f of x equals to x and relu or rectified linear unit function is f of x equals to max of 0 comma x and then we have solvers to optimize the weight there are basically three types of solvers lbf gs sgd and adm LBFGS stands for Limited Memory, Broiden Fletcher, Goldfarb, Shannon Algorithm. It belongs to the Causey Network family methods. Then we have Stochastic Gradient Descent SGD and Adaptive Momentum, which was proposed by King Ma, Daybreak, and Jimmy Bar. Then we use alpha or L2 penalty for regular for regularization. Then we have batch size. If we have a large data, it would be very time consuming and computationally costly to send all the data at once to the network. So we use mini batching. So mini batching for multilayer perceptron is either 200 or if the number of samples is less than 200 then the number of samples learning rate can be either constant and the constant value is given by learning rate initialization then inverse scaling which gradually decreases the learning rate at each time step t using an inverse scaling exponent of power t then adaptive it keeps the learning rate constant to learning initialized learning rate as long as training loss keeps decreasing each time two consecutive approach fail to decrease the training loss by at least tolerance or fail to increase validation score by at least tolerance if early stopping is on the current learning rate is divided by 5 learning rate initialization the initial learning rate used it controls the step size in updating the weights only used when solver is stochastic gradient descent or adaptive momentum power t the exponent for inverse scaling learning rate which is used when solver is stochastic gradient descent maximum iterations or maximum number of iterations to be performed however when we use stochastic solvers like st stochastic gradient descent or adaptive momentum it gives us the number of epochs that is how many times each data point will be used and not the number of gradient steps shuffle whether to shuffle samples in each 
iteration. It is only used when solver is stochastic gradient descent or adaptive momentum. Random state. It is the value that acts as seed if a number is given. If random state instance, if no random state value is provided, it will be generated using numpy dot random tol stands for tolerance for optimization the actual task of tolerance here is check whether the previous and the next loss is almost similar if it is similar it will stop and gives us the convergence it considers the model has been converged we can use tolerance unless learning rate is set to adaptive verbose whether to print progress message to standard output that is the jupyter notebook in our case warm start when warm start is set to true the output of the previous step or the previous epoch is used to initialize the next epoch momentum is used for updating the gradient descent it is a value between zero and one and used only when the solver is said to be stochastic gradient descent early stopping early stopping is used in case if we want to validate the model if it is set to true it will automatically set aside 10 percent of training data as validation and terminate the training when validation score is not improving by at least tolerance for two consecutive epochs and it is only effective when we use solver as stochastic gradient descent or adam that is adaptive momentum validation fraction the proportion of training data to set aside as validation set to early stopping must be between zero and one only used if early stopping is used in order to demonstrate multi-layer perceptron, I am going to use our used car sales data set. Here I am importing the required packages and us to load the data set numpy for mathematical operations. I am going to use the multi-layer perceptron regressor model from scikit-learn's neural network and I am going to split the data set in train and test sets using the model selection of scikit-learn and as it is a regression problem we are going to check the root mean squared error and for that i am going to use the cycle learns matrix package so let me import the packages and here i am importing the data as we know the price of the used car is the target or the y variable and all the factors that determine the y variable are the independent or the feature variables so let me split them into x and y and here i'm going to split the data set into 75 percent train and 25 percent test i'm going to call the regressor with tolerance as 0.000001 activation as 10h learning rate as 0.0001 Hidden layers, I'm going to use four hidden layers of size 350, 180, 75, and 33. And maximum iterations, I'm going to use 3000. And I'm setting the variables to true so that we can see what we get the loss as for each step. Let me fit it on the train data set so for the first iteration the loss started with 6.87 and it will keep on decreasing till a point where it is met at least the tolerance rate i will meet you back once all the steps have completed okay so as you can see after the 44th iteration we got the message that training loss did not improve more than tolerance for two consecutive epochs hence stopping now let's predict 
for the test data set and calculate the root mean squared error and the root mean squared error that we have got here the root mean squared error that we have got here is 1.056 which is not so good let us try with something else let us try to optimize the network further with activation as prelude and instead of using tolerance we can use learning rate as adaptive and let's see how this works i will be back after all the steps have completed okay guys even after multiple attempts i was able to get the root mean square error the least as 1.08 so I would stop here and I encourage you to work on different parameters and see how it converges and share it if you get a better result than me. Hope you guys like this video. Please hit on the thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe my channel. See you soon in the next video. Have a great day.